Who needs your help? Which kind of help do they need from you? And how can you make sure that you provide quality support and provide a sense of safety and dignity while helping them? These are the questions the Mental Health and Psychosocial Support Framework will help you to answer. Whether you are a staff member planning a programme, an evaluation team or a volunteer, the Mental Health and Psychosocial Support Framework can help you analyse the needs, the capacity and skills required by volunteers, the objectives of your mental health and psychosocial support work and assist you to see this work in a broader perspective. The framework is relevant for all volunteers, individuals, groups and communities operating in all contexts and not only in emergency contexts. Thereby it is different from the interagency standing committee pyramid that some of you might be familiar with, which is only relevant for emergency contexts. The foundation of helping people with mental health and psychosocial support needs is the protective circle. If you want to help address people's mental health and psychosocial support needs, you need to make sure there is a protective external environment around them. Protection means helping people to assess their rights in accordance with international human rights law, the Geneva Conventions and refugee law. This is especially the case for people living with mental health conditions and psychological distress, who are often discriminated against and struggle to access the necessary services. Providing principled assistance according to the seven fundamental principles of the Red Cross Red Crescent movement upholds people's dignity and makes them feel respected. To meet the basic needs of someone could be to reunite a family, to make sure that people placed in detention facilities are treated respectfully, or to provide migrants, refugees or asylum seekers with access to food and shelter and to help them feel included in their host community, for example, by giving them access to education. The first layer of the pyramid in the framework is the basic psychosocial support layer. Activities in this layer are often better integrated into health, protection, nutrition and education programmes, and the support should be accessible to 100% of the affected population. The support could also be psychological first aid or other basic emotional support that is normally done by trained Red Cross, Red Crescent staff and volunteers or community members. Meet the Mocha family. The oldest daughter, Xanthi, is a very lovable and friendly teenager who was born with Down syndrome. Xanthi's mother, Sarah, loves her daughter deeply and has always been worried others will negatively judge her and her daughter because of Xanthi's condition. Sarah sometimes feels alone after her mother, who was a great support to her, died. Luckily, Sarah has a very supportive friend named Yasmin, who she can talk and laugh with over a cup of tea. Yasmin has always been a good listener, a skill she learnt through volunteering at her local Red Cross branch. The basic psychosocial support that Sarah gets from Yasmin is important to her well-being. Sarah's father, Ted, is a retired fisherman who used to play dominoes and chess, but he was recently diagnosed with dementia, and now his family makes sure there is always someone accompanying him, as he sometimes gets lost walking in the town where they live, even though it is a route he has walked almost all his life. After his diagnosis, the Mocker family learned how to best support Ted from a local Red Cross volunteer who visits them at their home each month. Ted also takes part with his friends in weekly activities facilitated by the same Red Cross volunteer. The types of services and support Ted receives are based in the second layer of the pyramid, which is about providing focused psychosocial support. At this layer, there is a special focus on at-risk individuals, families and groups. It includes peer support and group work and the activities are done by Red Cross Red Crescent staff and volunteers or by trained community members. 
In the third layer of the pyramid, psychological support is provided to individuals or families who are presenting with psychological distress or who are at risk of developing mental health conditions. Interventions at this layer include counselling or psychotherapy and such services are usually provided by staff and volunteers from the Red Cross Red Crescent who have received formal training, normally in the form of a university degree for example or with a grounding in psychology, social work or medicine. Xanthi attends school along with the other children from the town but has individual support from an extra classroom assistant dedicated only to her. The classroom assistant gives Xanthi the psychological support, professional care and practical support that she needs to thrive. The top layer of the pyramid is called specialised mental health care and this is required by a smaller percentage of the population. It includes clinical care and treatment for individuals with chronic mental health conditions and for people suffering from severe distress. It could, for example, be clinical care for people living with a pre-existing mental health condition, treatment for survivors of torture or sexual violence, or alternative approaches to drug therapy. These services are usually provided within state healthcare or social welfare systems, and also in the case of the International Committee of the Red Cross and for some national societies, in detention facilities as well. Because this is specialised mental health care, it needs to be carried out by mental health professionals who are often staff members of national societies, but they may also be volunteers as well. In order to provide these services, formal professional qualifications are required, again in the form of a university degree, but they are also coupled with extensive amounts of clinical supervision and require a particular skill set. Sara works at a pharmacy where she meets a lot of foreigners that recently came to town. She thinks that many of them are addicted to pain medicine. She can tell by looking at their eyes and by observing their behaviour as they queue in the pharmacy. They seem bored, anxious, hyper alert, always moving and absent or distant when you try to speak to them. Sarah feels that she does not have the professional skills to offer them advice but luckily, she does know who to talk to. At the local Red Cross branch, they will know how to help these people and know who to refer them to for the support they actually require. The key thing about all the layers and the protective circle is that they exist in unison. We must be able to ensure access to activities and services in all layers. The framework is about creating a protective environment and a continuum of care for an individual or for a family who are finding themselves in distress. That means you must adapt your support and services to their changing needs. So the four layers of the pyramid represent a spectrum and the idea is to provide holistic services for the individuals and families in which we work. You might become concerned or scared about the demands on you. The model and approach does not imply that each national society or volunteer has to provide services in all layers. However, you do have to be able to assess people's needs and be knowledgeable on how to make a safe referral to the right service. To do this, Red Cross, Red Crescent staff and volunteers need to be aware of what other services are provided within your respective municipalities or communes or areas where you are providing mental health and psychosocial support services. The movement components are expected to assess, refer and advocate in relation to the full spectrum of mental health and psychosocial work presented in the model. And that means being able to assess, refer and advocate from basic psychosocial support so the importance of that practical, emotional and active listening support provided through psychological first aid and other basic support, right the way through the focused psychosocial support, psychological support and specialised mental health care. The framework guides you if you are a mental health and psychosocial support programme planner 
and it can help you to better organise your work. It provides the objectives as to what are the particular needs of the individuals, the families and communities in which we assist in our work and in relation to our auxiliary role and mandate with governments. Then, in relation to those needs, what are the competencies, the skill set and the training required for staff and volunteers to appropriately meet those needs? The framework can also be used by monitoring and evaluation teams to understand the broader objectives and how to measure and document the impact of our mental health and psychosocial work. It can also help the volunteer management and training teams work out what skills and competencies are required by their mental health and psychosocial support work volunteers. And it helps mental health and psychosocial volunteers know the types of activities and support they provide and how it fits within this broader framework and the broader need to create a continuum of care for affected populations. The monitoring and evaluation outcomes are part of the broader framework to help you orientate the work that you do. To provide the bigger perspective, the justification and the evidence base for your work so that you can help document the positive changes that you are having on individuals and families. The mental health and psychosocial support framework will help you make a difference for people in distress. Let's act together. <laughs>